paramedics take four-year-old Teddy to bay two. He's been rushed in with a head injury. Come to have a look at his little head, bless him. Oh. You OK? That's a proper dent, that, isn't it? Yeah. So it's probably a gradient like that. Yeah. And he's gone down there pretty fast yeah. speed. Yeah, hit it. Yeah. That's what I'm worried about, like really, the impact. Yeah, him not to fly him back. Um, I'm just so annoyed at myself. I've been really lucky, actually, since I've come back. I haven't had to look after a really sick child or a child that had a poor outcome that's um, the same age as, as my children. But actually, sometimes in work, even just a kid that cries in a similar way to, um, to mine will kind of... I just get a little kind of tug at the heartstrings. It was a solid wall. Solid wall, OK. It's a bit of a shock. To can you see too. down to school? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, you can definitely see it. Yeah, that would be great. You can make him cry and then I shall come in and try and uh, fix it. Four-year-old Teddy is in paediatric bay too to have a head injury stitched. Oh, look at you and your awesome bandage. You look really cool. Something his mum can't bear to witness. Hello, are you Dad? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm Jane. I'm one of the consultants. Yeah. Oh, no, they made you cry. <laughs> So, we have a plan of action. So, plan A is to try and do this without making him sleepy. The gel that we've got on is pretty magic and often works quite well. And in slightly older kids. Is it a feel me touching you? No, does it not bother you? It's good stuff, that cream, isn't it? Would it be all right if I just gave it a bit of a clean? It's just trying to get all of that hair out the way, isn't it? Well done. Oh, my goodness, you are like a super, superstar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you about some gel? Are you on her? Do you like it? Oh, thank you. I just let Daddy have his phone. Do you let him borrow it? If Daddy hasn't got any of his own, do you let Daddy borrow it? My arms just might get in the way. You keep looking away. We've just got to put one more stitch in. Oh, do you want us to give you some medicine and make you sleepy? What does Daddy think? Should we do it? One, one, more, more, one more try. More. <laughs> well done, sweetheart. That's all the stitches in. <coughs> what a superhero you were. Can I have a high five? Right, I'll come back and check on you in a minute and make sure you're all stuck back together properly and then we'll be able to let you go home. All right then, bye-bye. It's like he's in agony. Yeah. He's very distressed by something. Hi. Hiya. Due to his rare condition, Oliver is unable to tell paramedics what's wrong. It's in approximately 10 to 1, um, very distressed, a bit like that, which is unusual. On your counts. Ready, steady, slide. Oh, Mum, do you want to come up this side so you can be near him? Sorry, carry on your hand over. He has had paracetamol ibuprofen. Mum's concerned that this temperature. Yep. 
I don't know if he's in pain, um, and that's why he's quite distressed. He does have seizures often, but this is unusual for yeah. him. So decision taken just to bring him in. Yeah, absolutely. And let you check him over. It's not something I'm familiar with. That's fine. Anything about Angelman syndrome, even when no, they're not happy. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. Was well, that low yes. just when he was fitting? Or? Yes. Um, he was more twitching, oh, yeah. fingers, um, and eyes yeah, yeah. rolling ever so slightly. However, he was. He would listen to you if he said his name. He'd look at you. So he wasn't un unresponsive. Um, oxygen. He's not really tolerated it very well. So I'm just going to start from the beginning. My name's Jane, one of the A&E consultants. How old is Oliver? Uh, Oliver's ten. Ten. And apart from the Angelman syndrome and the epilepsy, any other medical no. problems at all? What made you worried enough to go to the GPs this morning? Um, in the middle of the night, I couldn't. Go. I just gave him. I just gave him ibuprofen because it was so. It was so hot. I couldn't even touch it. Fine. All right. So my next question was, what do his fits look like? We're just going to start getting, trying to get a drip in. Parents of, of children, especially those with kind of profound disabilities or severe medical problems, are absolute heroes. And they are their, their children's best advocates. They are the ones that can tell clinicians what's wrong, what needs to be done. We teach our juniors, if a parent's worried and they're telling you that they're worried, you need to listen to them. And I'd say that's even more so for, for parents of, of kids with kind of complex medical needs. So what makes you know that he's fitting now? Because I don't know Oliver, but um, you watch his hand. Because he seems quite purposeful. He's pushing me away yeah, at the moment. Yeah, but, but that one's like... Flicking, OK. Yeah. He's very distressed by something. Sorry, darling. Can we have a look at your... You've got very cold hands, which isn't going to help. In the paediatric rhesus bay, the specialist care team has arrived to stabilise 10-year-old Oliver. Hello. Are you aware of Oliver for hay in rhesus now? Right, Joe. Um, Yes. So he's a 10 year old with Angelman syndrome uh, and epilepsy. Had a seizure today at 12.50. Uh, he's, had a chest, he's had a chest x ray and he's got pneumonia. I think you're getting to like this place too much, you. You're coming a bit too often, aren't you? Are you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think quite hopefully that's all right. I'm hopefully going to get him up to the ward shortly. Um, if he starts fitting, let us know, because I think you're probably much better at spotting it than the rest of us, because we look for dramatic seizures, yeah, not, yeah. Um, not these kind of subtle ones that, that um, Oliver has. So, well, hopefully won't see you again anytime soon. <laughs> well, that's any. Yeah. So we've got a 52-year-old male and stay COPD in respiratory failure. What should you here, please? Ten minutes, thank you. You can fetch him straight into resource, we'll see you there. Come on, Dr Humphreys, it's me and Lee. <laughs> Leading today's resuscitation team is Dr Julian Humphrey. Are you going to be all right with no glasses on? I've got my contact lenses oh. on now. Unfortunately, I can see you. <laughs> we feed off each other, I think, in terms of um, the, the comical em element of what we do. And we, uh, we don't take our job too seriously. I think that's probably what it is. But when we have to, you know, we're on the ball. Paramedics bring 52-year-old Andrew straight to resus. Hello, young man. Yeah. Andrew, I'm just going to get you onto this trolley. You're in the hospital. Oh, no. Can you shuffle across? Yeah, ready, ready. It's like... Oh. Oh. I'm going to sweet I'm just going to hook you up to a load of machines. All one. right. Are we all right to get to your chest? Yeah. You're just going to take some blood we'll have a little listen to your chest, all right, while we put all of these bits and pieces on, OK? Do you feel like you're struggling? Community matron's come out today. It's just a, a routine visit that she's come out for. Basically, she's, uh, she's found him outside at bed, increased rest rate, uh, sat on her two at that time, 60%. Okay. 
Look at me, look at me. Right, I'm Dr. Humphrey, okay? How long have you been like this? A couple of days. Right. All right, bud. Have you had any shivers, sweats? Yeah. And are you bringing anything off, off your chest? Yeah, loads of, loads of stuff. What colour? Green. No blood? I have, a little bit, yeah. I'm in a lot of, lot of pain. Yes, I can try and get rid of that for you once I get a little tube in. Yeah. You were a miner, were you? How many years were you down the pit? Seven years, right, okay. I presume you were a smoker as well, were you? Nice smoke. <laughs> it takes a lot to be a miner. To survive that and then be crippled by the effects of it, that's a very difficult situation to deal with. And that sometimes shows true in, in the strength of character that these patients have. Right, okay. Basically, they're just saying that your lungs are packed up and there's nothing that they can do about it. Exactly, yeah. Right, and in the end, your lungs will, will pack up and that'll be, that, that'll be it, won't it? That's exactly, yeah. Right, okay. So we're really struggling to get a line in you and you say that normally go for your feet. Yeah. Well, I can't really see anything there, either. I'll try over here again. Right, I'm going to go this side without you. I think they're all shot. Yeah. Totally shot. I tend these days to try and imagine that that's my father sitting there, or my mother, or my sister. You don't block it out, you can't block it out. You mentally process it and then you come out the other side and you carry on. That's what you do. We're not aiming for a cure here, we're aiming for comfort and support. You've done really well. Thank you. We're done. His brother Adrian has arrived. So I'll give the med reg a call and she'll take him down and have a word. Hiya, it's Benita down in Lisa's, just to let you know Andrew's with us here. See you soon. Bye bye. One last blood test. I feel like we've got some love hate relationship going off me and you. <laughs> right, she likes this arm again for me. No, it's not as good this time. Mm -hmm. Right, sharp job, sweetheart. I'm sorry. Hiya, sorry to bother you. It's sister downstairs in ED Resus. I've got a chappy for you, Andrew Bell. Do you know about him? 52 year old. Do you want me to hand him over to you? I think he's getting close to breach as we speak. It's end stages of COPD, this chappy. Um, it's only young. Andrew is moved to intensive care for further treatment. The team there will work to stabilise him. Morning, I'm Dr. Humphrey. Ryan, you're not going to be walking around at the moment, are you? Yeah. So we're going to take you somewhere else. We're going to uh, put this ankle straight because right. uh, I don't like the colour of your foot. Okay. Right. Uh, and it's a little bit bent. What dog was he walking? Uh, Big jaw in the shoot. Right. Okay. That reminds me of a joke. <laughs> which I will, uh, which I will tell later on. Eighty-one-year-old Brian is moved to resus for emergency treatment. How on earth did you get back home? Uh, two police officers lifted me up and took you home. No, no, no. Yeah, only across the road. All right, okay. And where, where are the dogs? Each one of them we'll took it back to house. The dog took itself back to the no, house. No, one of the police officers. All right, okay. Look at the colour of that foot compared to the other one. Yeah, so I couldn't really feel a pulse in, that, in the top of that foot. 
I'm concerned that the foot hasn't got a good blood supply. It's looking a little bit mottled and cold. We need to correct that. Um, have you pulled many ankles before? Right, okay. Yeah. So the first, first thing we want to do is grab hold of the, cal um, the calcaneum, the heel, and just pull it, all right? Pull it down, okay? That should disimpact it. We're going to give them high flow and then just monitor CO2. Yeah. So this has got oxygen going in. Yeah. Okay, that's just going to sit underneath your nose. Chris is going to make you a little bit sleepy. While you're sleepy, we're going to be pulling your ankle straight. Right. When you come round, your, ankle, uh, your leg will be in a plaster. All right? All right. How much pain have you got at the moment? Not a lot, it's just tingly. Just tingly, yeah. right, OK. Have you got anything you want to ask me? Okay. No, OK. Oh. Who's putting the cannula in? So, Brian, yeah. I'm going to give you a couple of different medicines, OK? Right. The first one's going to make you feel a little bit strange. You might even see things. All right. All right. Just relax, go with it. All right? I'll wait till uh, it's nice and sleepy. Brian, just try and keep your eyes open for me. Please away with the fairies at the moment. In recess bay three, Brian's sedative has taken effect. Right, let's take that out first. That's it. Just bring this up a little bit. Yep. Okay, so if you grab hold of the foot, you can give it a good pull, pull, pull. That's it, see what I mean? Right, okay. A bit, a bit more traction, that's it. Good, okay. Now, a lot of the time, they, they, the junior doctors will be fighting to do it. And the other thing is they need experience in doing these things. People will come and watch. If they hear that something is going on, they, you know, you'll get the odd, ooh. You feel that pulse now. Just move the ankle up and down now, just to see what sort of movement you've got there. When Claire puts the plaster on now, we're going to be putting it back into that position, OK? Need, OK, need, so just relax. Yeah. So just relax now, hold, hold it here. So you can see why why this needed reducing, so the blood supply's going straight back into the foot, isn't it? Yep. And then we can manipulate it again afterwards, just gently. Mm -hmm. That's the reason for doing this straight away, rather than sending him round for an x-ray, just to restore the blood supply. Very good. And that's how you do it, essentially. OK. How are you feeling? OK. Do you remember any of that? Huh? Right, being in just the space. <laughs> <laughs> Job's all done. Joshua Moore, please. Are you following me? Right. Uh, I'm Dr James. Nice to meet you. Um, just start from the beginning, if that's OK. Uh, yeah, well, that's all we can go uh, underneath my nose. Uh, I'm getting headaches, like, pretty much every day from then, but but not constant. But ever since Sunday afternoon, just gone, um, it's just been constant all, like, every day. Um, day and nights, working through night as well, so... Okay. Um, this morning, I started vomiting. How many times do you think you've been sick now? Yeah, just twice. Today, so. and, and today's the first time you've actually been sick? Yeah, yeah. OK. No nosebleeds or anything? Uh, no, not since I did it, so... Fine. OK. We'll have a good look at you, and then it sounds like we probably need to get a scan sorted of your head. But, uh... There are always those patients that you're... Um, the moment you meet them, they're very, very high risk. And the nuances of it that sometimes just prick your ears and make you stop to think. Josh's parents wait anxiously for a diagnosis. It's not, it's not a nice experience. Um, hopefully you get results if that's what's causing pain. I have two concerns. One, that you've, you've, you've hit your face and your head um, and then got progressive headaches and whether that's caused anything. And the other concern is that actually there was quite a distance between you hitting your nose and then that sudden headache. And we don't want to be missing something else that's happening. So if you have bleeding inside the head for, for medical reasons, then that can be a sudden onset headache. And we don't want, you know, the red herring of your, of your nose injury to, to sort of mask that, OK? So if you hold, hold tight here, I'll just go and organise that scan and I'll let you know when that is. Right. For Dr Jones, it's not just the four-hour target adding pressure. If Josh has a bleed on the brain, every minute is critical. Most people with a headache will feel disorientated, drowsy, unwell, 
but vomiting in particular um, concerns me and the fact that this chap's headaches come on so so rapidly and a distance after the injury there's just a couple of couple of symptoms that make you a bit more alert quite a worry I mean, um, just want to get it sorted and find out we know why he's having why he's having these headaches with the results of his head scan back dr Bean takes on josh's case hi is it joshua hi let's just pull you into here Hi, my name's Dr Bean, I'm one of the consultants. The doctor who saw you earlier was a bit worried that the severe headache might be related to a small bleed in your brain. Right. We can't see that on the scan, but that doesn't rule that out. So the plan is now is to get you admitted up onto the medical ward upstairs. And then we'll probably want to do a lumbar puncture just to double check. So that should be happening fairly soon, OK? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's been a bit of a wait. Josh will be admitted to another department for further treatment. Yeah, I've had a longer punch before. It's not nice. Oh. It's just like a bottom of your spine, a needle. Yeah. Enjoy. 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 Angela is suffering with a suspected heart attack. Do you want to just sit up a little bit more, my love? We'll just, uh, we'll just lift you up a little bit. Yeah, we'll do it for you, my love. We'll do it. One, two, three. There you go. Yes, yeah, so this is Angela. Angela's 63. No history of heart problems, just hypertension, cholesterol and kidney failure. Yeah. Um, two days ago, began with like a right-sided back pain. Right. Um, it's not gone away. Today, um, really severe, gone up into the neck, really clammy. We did some blood pressure, it was uh, 90 on air. So that's why we, we phoned up here, just for the way that she got. She said she felt really, really unwell. Right. Patients who come with, with heart attacks may not come with this classical public perception of, them, of clutching your chest and being drip white and sweaty. And it's about not missing the, the clues that you're being given. Have you got any pain at the moment? It's still in my back. Still in your back? Yeah. What about if you breathe in? Is it worse? No, it's all right. Right. Does it feel very severe? Did it come on just like that, bang? Well, I've been in bed for two days. Right, I need a nurse. I'm here. Working alongside Dr Humphrey in recess today is sister Amanda Calvert. Just sit yourself forward, because I want to have a listen to the back of your chest. That's all right. Can I lift this up? Yeah. Okay. And have you been feverish the last few days? Yeah. Shivery, hot? I've been shivering. You have been shivering? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It definitely makes me reflect on my own mortality. I realise that life is very fragile and it can be taken away from you like that. Do you feel well in yourself? No. Another reason for suddenly becoming short of breath is a clot on the lung. Yeah. So we'll need to just check that over as well. See if we can find a vein then, and we'll uh, start doing some blood tests. Dr Humphrey has ruled out a heart attack, but is unsure of the root cause of Angela's serious condition. So X-ray going to come around and do portable X-ray, and I'll take that and get it measured. So antibiotics and some fluids. Yeah. Being an emergency medicine doctor is all about problem solving. I'll ask you to breathe in and hold your breath, all right. We, we like the thrust and the, the adrenaline buzz of, of dealing with problems and potentially in the recess room, a lot of them can be life-saving or life-challenging, life-threatening problems. I think it looks like there may be evidence of an infection there. Mm. Yeah. There's certainly something wrong with your chest. Yeah. Um, and that would fit with the levels of oxygen in your blood being a little bit low. Yeah. So I've given you some antibiotics. Right. We'll just wait until these other blood tests come back. Right. Um, and um, obviously, oh. I think you're going to need to come into hospital just really to, to get to the bottom of this, really. OK? Yeah. Three hours after being admitted, Dr Humphrey has a diagnosis for Angela in recess bay one. And bronchogram, so this is all consolidation here. It's mainly in the right lung, yeah. Yeah, and there's a, you can't see the bottom, the base is a very blurred. And if you actually listen to her chest, she's a, it's quite dull down here, there's hardly any air getting on. So, your blood tests show that you've got a significant infection. It looks very much like it's a chest infection, a pneumonia. 
the blood tests are actually markedly raised for infection. So you'll definitely need to come into hospital. Yeah. I think I'm going to give you some um, stronger antibiotics than I've already given you. I think it's a good job that you came today, actually, because if, if you'd left it any longer, it could have been life-threatening, I think. Right. OK? Yeah. Sister Wilkes is monitoring Steve and his wife Gail in Recess Bay 3, following a high-speed road crash. Right, then, Stephen. Steve was admitted three hours ago and is waiting for X-ray results of his chest and legs. Started off, uh, we're just off to the shops, just normal Sunday food shopping and normal. We go down that route every time. And this vehicle just come from nowhere. We're going at speed and just hit his head on and rolled the car three times. I think it's just shock that know that we have actually survived it. But we're here to sell tail. It's very important to listen to patients because they've just gone through a road traffic accident. It's not an everyday occurrence for them. They are scared, they are shocked. Let them get it off the chest. Thankfully, them people pulled us out. Can't say a big enough thank you. It shows you the good people of Barnsley, isn't it? Looks fine, it's been reported. I've scanned his abdomen and his pelvis as well. I think the radiologists have said that's fine. I think he's been, been quite lucky. We've seen your scans, everything's fine. Little bits of glass to get out. I just need to have a quick look at your back. It's, it's my knee, it's yeah. absolutely killing me. Nothing on the back there, yeah, it's fine. Okay, back you go. Yeah. Okay, so we've not found anything wrong inside your head. Nothing wrong with your neck, chest looks fine, your chest x-ray is fine. The scan of your belly is fine, there's that bruise. Uh, the surgeon will have another look now. Yeah. Um, uh, your arms are fine. Yeah. Uh, so it's just that leg. So yeah. and we haven't found anything. There's nothing terribly out of place on the x-rays. If you're comfortable, we can get you home. If you're in just too much discomfort to manage, then we'll keep you until you're a bit more comfortable. Yeah. Could have been worse. Could have been dead. <laughs> okay. All right, then. Thanks a lot. I'm going to head home shortly. And uh, with a bit of luck, you are as well. Well, thank you. <laughs> you should be okay for your holiday. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, I'm going to get off for me 60th, but should be doing now. So I'm just going to give you face yeah, and head a little some, clean. Some bits still stuck um, in, on the top. You'll just tell me if anything hurts. Yeah, it's it's a very vulnerable time for patients because it's always unexpected why they've come in. You know, it's nothing that they've planned. They've probably got up that morning and didn't expect to uh, attend A&E that day. That's all you need, uh, five days before your 60th. <laughs> well, you remember it, weren't you? Well, uh, obviously something like that, you just think, well, I'm lucky to be alive. Definitely. Could have been a lot worse, couldn't it? Could have definitely been a different story. You do look a bit better now. You've got all that blood off your uh, face. Yeah, my, my yeah. Foot's, yeah, my foot. Yeah, it's still really painful. Is it? Yeah. Right, OK, so it's going to be quite sore then, isn't it, yeah. for, a, for a little while? Every bone in my body aches. I've dislocated my finger. I had to have all my wedding rings cut off and everything is... Yeah. It's a good job we did it, cos the hands look more swollen. Yeah. They can be mended, love. They'll be like new. Steve is discharged just before breaching the four-hour target. Right. OK. OK, then. Thanks a lot. All right, Gail, take care, love, and enjoy your birthday in Benny Dorm. I will. <laughs> Three people have been involved in a road traffic accident. The passengers have sustained minor injuries, but paramedics are concerned about damage to the driver's spine. The driver of a car involved in an RTC impact to off-side front. She's had 10 milligrams of morphine for a pain that's 7 out of 10. She has an existing back problem already. No loss of consciousness. No loss of consciousness whatsoever, no. But all her uh, O2 sats, everything's been all right. You just keep your head nice and still for me, lovey, and let us do everything, OK? So, I'm just going to have a little feel now, OK? Does it hurt there when I touch? No. no. I'd like you to try and turn your head to the right as far as you can. How far can you get it? That's perfect. Well done. Now try and turn your head to the left as far as you can. Lovely. Oh. So we can keep all that stuff off you now, all right? Ah! Oh! Is that your back? So we're going to have a proper feel of your back, OK? We're going to need to roll you on your side safely so that we don't move anything around too much, OK? I just need a log roll. 
You do get screamers and you do get the people who are quiet and it's just about probing but ultimately if they're in pain and they say they're in pain then we'll believe that they're in pain. Next being cleared, uh, no loss of consciousness, long standing back problems, just got some pain in the back, had 10 milligrams of morphine which is in quite a bit of pain when we took her off the scoop so. So we're going to roll you, I'm going to have a feel down your back, same as before, if it hurts a lot tell me. I'm only going to roll that. 15 degrees. Yeah. Okay, we'll go on the move. Ready, steady, move. That's fine. Just that part, that's fine, that's fine. Ah. Just there. Down near your bum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. up to one side. Up to the left hand side. Just there. What about there? Yeah. Is it worse the lower down I go? <laughs> right, lovely, thank you. Okay, ready, steady, roll. Ah. Is it just oh. the more fear you've had for the pain relief? I'm guessing, yeah. Yeah? What do you normally take you back? Tramadol. How much do you have? 50 or 100? 50. 50. I don't like taking it unless I've got so. Okay. Have you had 100 milligrams of tramadol before? Do you want to take the chance of that today to make you a bit more comfortable or do you just want 50? I'll take the 100. Yeah, yeah I'm going to take the one. In assessment bay one, Sister Hawksworth is with Leslie, who has severe back pain following a road traffic accident. What? I'm just going to pop you here, lovey, while I get you some pain relief, and then we'll send you for the x-ray. Both passengers have escaped with minor injuries. Where were you going this morning? Anyway, nice. Clifford Hospital. Oh, dental hospital at Sheffield. Mm, with my dad, yeah. All oh, right. So he's not going to get there today, then, is he? Has anybody phoned him up to let him know that you'll not be there? I think the young man said he was going to phone him. And... But your dad's all right, is he? He's down here somewhere. Wheelchair, I think. With my sister. <laughs> Your family out in then? Yeah. Stay at Barnsley and Eve? Looks that way, <laughs> don't it? <laughs> oh, I think of better places. Yeah, yeah. Is it too tramadol now, darling? Yeah, I'll be okay. I'll look after you. <laughs> Nurse Jackson heads to Recess Bay 1 to treat 82-year-old Ken. He's suffering with shooting pains in his head, chest and arm. One, two, three. Hello. Well, that's waking you up. Ken's wife, Joyce, is with him. Three, two, three. Oh. How's that? Thank you. Thank you. had a stroke um, yeah. six years ago, he's, so he's already got a weakness in his left side. He gets pain in there and tingling in the left arm anyway, yeah. and it was just more so today, and he couldn't put his finger on why. And then we've moved him to the ambulance, and blood pressure's dropped, rests are still up, and then temperature's just gone up like a whole degree. Mm. Tried to cannulate him to get some fluids up. His veins are awful. So how you been getting on? Oh, terrible. Terrible. When did all this start? In the night. In the night. And you've been coughing as well, have you? I've coughed a bit. Yeah. And are you bringing anything off your chest? Right. I brought a bit off my boat. And what colour was that? I don't know. I don't know. And have you had any pain in the chest at all, Ken? Yeah, in, in his, his back. In, in his lungs, lungs. Yes, yeah. In his and, back. Who, and who's this you with? My wife. Gaffer. No, what I'm not Gaffer. <laughs> and have you had any headaches? Yeah. You had some headaches and what? Well, they're like, no, no, it's like a ping, like a, a bee sting. Like it's a bee sting, and then goes away, does it? Yeah. So you felt pretty rotten then, have you? Uh, yeah. I was eight year old when I knew my husband. Aww. And I'm 78. Mm. It's a long time, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it was his wedding anniversary last week. 59 years. The human nature is just a wonderful thing. If you take your time to just stop and watch, there's some really tender, gentle moments in Rhesus. It does make you feel more positive about life. Uh, you also realise sometimes life is cruel as well. Good things will happen and bad things will happen. 
to be okay. I'll look after you. In recess bay one, Ken is still in a critical condition. Ken, I'm going to have arranged for a chest x-ray. They'll come and do that now. Uh, have some antibiotics and fluids. I'm just seeing a patient out in the department. I want to finish off with them, then come back, write your notes, and have a look at you and see how you're feeling after some treatments, Connie. Okay. We've just come to do a chest x-ray on you, Kenneth. I'm just going to push you up. My job is to hunt for the life-threatening conditions, to find the diseases that are going to affect life and limb. And uh, that's, that's the, the driving force. If you like puzzles and games, then emergency medicine is probably for you, really. The chest x-ray does suggest you might have a bit of infection. Yeah. The antibiotics I've given you will cover chest, urine and a few other oh. places as well. OK, but we'll keep an eye on you and get you up to the ward as soon as we can, all right? Oh, all right, Ken, I'll see you in a bit. Dr Humphrey has called Teresa to assess 76-year-old Cynthia, who is struggling to breathe. You were a little bit blue when you got here, I think. I don't think there's any worse symptom for a patient than actually feeling like you're gasping your last breath. Their brain's not working, the rest of the body's crying out for oxygen, and they become very sick very quickly unless you do something about it. Right, I'm Dr Humphrey, you're Cynthia's other half. I was right, OK, and you brought her up with a bad chest. Very bad chest. OK. Now, do you not...? Right, OK. So you've had a bad chest for about 20 years? Yes, I stopped smoking 20 years ago. Right. Now, how far can you walk normally without getting breathless, before you became unwell? Probably 50 years, because they have vascular disease as well. Right, OK. I've nine operations on the legs. I can only get from the bedroom to the bathroom, and then I'm out of puff. Right, this OK, week. that's this week. So your exercise tolerance has gone right down, hasn't it? You can't even walk within your house exactly. without getting breathless. Exactly. So have you had any problems with your heart, heart attacks angina. or angina? I have angina. Right, but never a heart attack? Never. Not OK. Anymore. We'll need to take some blood from you and send you for a chest X-ray and things. Awesome. Let's have a little look at you, then. Just sit yourself forward. Let's have a listen to your back. Mine's a bit cold, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's not sounding very nice in there, very crackly. So what were you doing when you were working? Work mainly office work. Before we got married, I said worked in a paint spraying place, which I shouldn't have done. Right. Because it were chemicals, but we needed the money to get married. So it's what you did. Is this the first time that you've had a nasty infection in your chest that hasn't gone away with antibiotics? Yes. They did a heart tracing, didn't they, earlier on? OK. Yeah, you've not got a lot of oxygen going around in your blood. Let me just uh, get these blood tests sent off and we'll uh, get, start, get you started on some medicines, all right. In recess bay three, Dr Humphrey is still trying to get to the root of why Cynthia is so short of breath. So you've had a reaction to doxycycline in the past, according to your GP notes. Yes. And ampicillin and erythromycin. Your GP sent a sample of your spit to the lab, is that right? Yes, I took it down on Wednesday. Right, let's see if that's come back then. She's sensitive to several antibiotics. We know that amoxicillin's clearly not working, so we need to give her perhaps something slightly different. I've just checked and she's grown Haemophilus influenza in her sputum. Right, OK. From the sample that was sent by a GP and it's resistant to amoxicillin. Right, So that is why on. she's not got better. Right, the, the sample of spit that you sent was sent to the lab by your family doctor, yes. grew a bug, which has got a fancy name, uh, called oh. Haemophilus influenza, and it fights off amoxicillin. So now we know that you're on the wrong antibiotic, we can get you started on the right one. Oh, good. Okay. Antibiotics, antibiotics, antibiotics. Coemoxiclav and clarithromycin. Right. Hello, it's uh, Julian Humphrey around in uh, recess. Can we have a portable chest X-ray on a lady called Cynthia Me Meginson? OK, thank you. Bye. You've got some changes at the bottom of your lung on your X-ray that right. suggest that you've got a pneumonia on the left-hand side at the bottom. Right. And probably a little bit on the right-hand side, all right? right? 
So it should, once you're on the right antibiotics, that should start to clear up fairly quickly, okay. all right? That's fine. So um, I'm sure you'll be feeling a lot better within a couple of days. 40-year-old Peter has been in a serious road traffic accident and is taken straight to Resus. Yeah. You honestly don't know what's going to happen when you step in and you see a patient. So uh, there's a bit of, um, you know, jitter behind it. But, yeah, that's where you want to be, isn't it? That's, you you want to be there um, doing what you're trained for. Peter. Open your eyes for me. Keep your eyes open, otherwise we're going to have to poke you all the time. What's going on? Car crash. Car crash. Yeah. How did that happen? I'm not sure. 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 Yeah. Next thing, um, he heard we're allowed ban. Yeah. He felt like his car would be pushed, pushed into central reservation, yeah. spun, and ended up still in third lane. Yeah. And he has got up and he has mobilised after that. Okay. And he's complaining to see spine tenderness and spinal, upper spinal pain as well. Right. I don't know how it happened. What we're going to do, yeah. we're going to roll you yeah, to assess your back. Okay, and if it hurts, tell me. Do don't nod, don't shake first. your head. Okay? okay? Is everybody ready? Yeah. So, what we're going to do is to, we are going to go on roll. Ready, steady, roll. There we go. All right. He had been in a, in a high speed accident, 70 mile an hour. So, first alarm bell, 70 mile an hour. Okay. Any pain? Yeah. D4. Sometimes in recess there is no obvious blood or deformity, is there? Yeah, and then you have to mm, work out what is actually wrong with the patient. All of it. All of it. Roll. Is it hurt? The middle of my back is really hurting now. Following a 70 mile an hour car crash, 40 year old Peter is still in recess bay too. He's being assessed for internal injuries by Dr. Baltescu. Well, what I'll do, Peter, because you've got a bit of pain around this side, I'll use uh, an ultrasound scanner to look for fluid in your belly. With this very high impact, uh, there is a possibility that he might have some internal bleeding. And if that's the case, I need to refer him to the major trauma center. Here we go. Right, well, that's the kidney coming into view, okay? And then basically looking for fluid in between this bit and this bit. This should be as a dark line, but it's not. That's all fine. Okay. Good. So there's no free fluid that I can find, okay? Which is reassuring. Good. Okay. What we'll do, we'll just keep an eye on you until you get bored. I'm bored. Oh, that's too early to get bored now. And we'll see if you're, all your observations remain fine and you're okay in yourself, we might let you go home. Let's have a look then, Pete. Let's have a look at this uh, crashed car. That's not right good, is it? No. I was on my way for a date. So my date's coming to pick you up. Your date's coming to pick you up? <laughs> Peter is now stable and being transferred to a recovery bay to wait for his date. Have to keep an eye out for Peter's uh, date arriving. Oh, she's coming here. Uh, she's coming here. Oh. She's uh, not met him yet. Come, come pack ready, though. <laughs> <laughs> Hazel has hypothermia, and the team desperately need to raise her temperature to stabilise her. Getting warmer? Yes. Yes, sir. Her son, Jimmy, is by her side. We don't know exactly what's happened, but she's fallen down, and one of her best friends, a neighbour, has found a trap behind the door. Uh, so she immediately called services, and here we are. How are you feeling, my dear? I'm just going to try and move it a bit. Can you... That's it. That's it. Uh, do you just want this running free running? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 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 
temperature reading, 33.8. She's got quite a lot going off, really. She's got a low temperature. She's been on the floor for quite a while. She's got shallow breathing and her blood sugar was in her boots. But she's a known insulin-controlled diabetic, so she has a history of her blood sugars going up and down. She's just not a well lady at all. In neighbouring Recess Bay too, 78-year-old Hazel is still being monitored by Sister Wainwright and Dr Adewunmi. How are you feeling? Not too bad. Excellent. Better for my company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Must be desperate, then. Shut up. <laughs> what do you remember last? I don't know. You don't know? That's all right. No, I spent most of it. Sat up set each. So you've got some good neighbours, haven't you? Good friends, look, haven't you? Yeah. So would you have to come down to see you, haven't you? Feel tired now? Yeah, I am, Dad. You're a bit more comfortable? I am all the She's got a bit more colour, which is reassuring, and she's alert, and she's she's got no pain anywhere. I'm happier. Temperature's better. She's fab. Fab. She's snoring, isn't she? So she's on some antibiotics now. She's having some fluids. Get her blood sugar up. X-rayed her. She's got a catheter in that's monitoring her urine mm. output. And uh, we'll scan her head just to make sure there's nothing going on yeah. with her head. Yeah? yeah. And then we'll get her upstairs yeah, if that's OK. Yeah, thank you. You all right? How'd you have your cup of tea? Strong. Strong? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Are you warming up? Yeah. Good. Put your hand back under. Behave yourself, won't you? I will. And I'll go make you a I'll cup of tea. Me. Do you have a sugar in your tea? No. No. I'm going to put a little one in. Today. Yeah. Right, I'm going to leave it on the side there. After three further days of treatment at Barnsley Hospital, Hazel Booth sadly passed away. Also in the hub is Nurse Galabova, who's waiting for the results for her patient, Tristan, who is struggling to pass a kidney stone. If I've got pain, I'm really, really good at dealing with it. So this is, this is something else, this. He's definitely got the kidney stone. It's quite big, like that, 4.5. I didn't realise it were a proper, like, ploppy stone. <laughs> Spiky, like really spiky. So that must be worse for men then. Yeah. Because you know, when you're passing it, it's rubbing to the wall of mm. urethra. Oh, That's gosh. how you bleed and start bleeding. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They've got Those more. women are used to torture, yeah. aren't we? But yeah. <laughs> they can't uh, bear pain. They can't bear pain, no. He likes to say to people that he's the head, but I like to say I'm the neck that turns the head. Mm. So this neck is keeping him here. <laughs> But there's no rest today, and Sister Wainwright's next patient, 70-year-old Jennifer, is waiting in Bay 4. What's got you into hospital today? Trouble breathing. OK, how long has this been going on? Uh, well, I had pneumonia before Christmas. I lost uh, two or three days. I started to waste stuff before that. OK. It's pretty much from there. Are you uh, coughing at all? Yes. Are you coughing anything up? Uh, right. Some nice deep breaths for me. Right, pop your bum on here. I'm going to put you a bit of oxygen on. Your oxygen levels are a little bit low. Hey, Alpha. 
This lady, she's uh, basically chesty, short breath, um, had a slight wheeze. Um, she doesn't look particularly like she's working hard. However, she's worse on exertion, slightly tachycardic at 101 as well. Just if you wanted to have an X-ray sooner rather than later. Thank you. <coughs> Nurse Schumacher has her own way of dealing with the stress of the job. Sometimes when it's just like, just absolutely mental, you just literally, you just need to go to your person and you just have a hug. You're my buddy today, aren't you? So, let me tell you, well, you're gonna have to be. I don't know, you just get on with it, don't you? And you just try and ride it out. Millie's next patient is 79-year-old Catherine, who, following a fall, needs constant monitoring. Hello. Back again, aren't I? OK, we'll check your blood pressure again. And pop this one on. Finger again. Right. <clears throat> so can you tell me where you are? Hospital. That's it. Um, do you know what month we're in? March. Yeah. You know what year? 79. Mm, not quite. It's this question, isn't it? Not quite. Don't worry. That's cheating. That's cheating. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> Dry. I use humour a lot, like literally that is that is my favourite thing to build a rapport is using humour. But you gotta be careful if some people don't like it. <laughs> or maybe it's the wrong situation. But yeah. It's, that's that's about being I think that makes you a good nurse if you can judge what what builds that re relationship quick enough. Am I alright to just check your blood uh, blood sugar? You are, yes. Thank you. Okay, that's what we hair look like, all right. <laughs> Looks lovely. What about my eye? It's lovely. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to borrow a finger then. From like the age of eight, I had like operations on my feet. So I was in and out of the children's hospital a lot. The nurses, they probably made me feel at ease and I just thought like it'd be a good job to, it could be a good job to have because I'm not scared of hospitals and I like it. Still, still a bit low. Have you had anything to eat? Have you had anything to eat since coming in? No. Can I tempt you with something? Cheeky biscuit, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Which one takes your fancy? I mean, you could technically have them all if you want. I'd, I'll, I'll I'd not be judging. I love being a nurse. I think it, I think it suits me. It suits me to the ground. And I, I, I couldn't. I genuinely couldn't see me doing anything else now. Doctor Acti is six hours into her shift. Her next patient is Gladys, who's been brought in after a suspected heart attack. So let's start at the beginning again. I'm Jane, I'm one of the doctors. Can I check how old you are? 86. What's happened to you today to bring you up to hospital? What happened? Why are you here? Why am I here? Yeah. That's quite, it's quite a big question for a Thursday evening. Heart was beating fast. OK. What time did that happen at? Um, Kevin, must be early on in the day. Sorry? Must have been quite early on. Early in the on day. this morning, love. We have a, an expanding ageing population. Um, I think lots of people think when they come to, to work in emergency medicine, it'll be like ER and they'll all be managing trauma and crazy exciting stuff. But actually, elderly care is still, but can be crazy and exciting, but that is the mainstay of our work. So, this week, has your chest pain been worse, happening more often? Fine, so that's the worst episode this morning. And who do you live with at the moment, Gladys? Now, these pains that you've been, the pal well, the flutterings that you're getting, do they come on any time or just when you're trying to do something or...? When I'm trying to do something and sometimes when I'm sat, just sat down. OK. All right. Now, your blood test is OK for your heart, so there's nothing to suggest you've had another small heart attack, which is good. So I think as long as our risk score says you're OK too, we'll get you home. Uh -huh. All right, so just bear with me. I'll just go and do that, have a look on our computer and see it. I can never remember it off the top of my head. 
get so that that's really difficult. She obviously doesn't want to go home, but there's not really very much that we can offer in hospital for a for a patient like that. It's really hard and really tricky. Um, so I'm hoping when when the daughter-in-law comes back, we can have a little bit more of a sensible discussion about it. Um, and then if not, I'll, I'm not sure. I'll look like a horrible person because I'll have to send her home anyway. But in Bay Three. 86-year-old Gladys is reluctant to be discharged by Dr. Acti. Gladys, what do you think we'll achieve by admitting you to hospital tonight? What, what do you want to get out of it? Well, why would you like to stay in hospital tonight? Because I don't feel... It's all right, you can say the words. I don't feel as if I'm well enough you know, to go. From the point of view of your symptoms, I know that they're unpleasant, but admitting you overnight tonight isn't going to fix that problem. The human in you says, I'll just admit her, and that's what she wants, and it will make her happy. Okay. I just don't want to go on. Okay. So, so the problem is that it's... I still it's... don't feel right. I know, I know, but... There's no, there's no medical reason to admit you. The, your family said they'll take you, they can go home with you and one of them can stay with you tonight to look after you. I, I, I just don't want to go tonight. OK, why don't we wait until your daughter-in-law comes back and we'll come up with a plan. Hospitals are not good for old people if they don't need to be there. If we absolutely have to admit you because you need hospital-based treatment, we will. But actually, if you don't, if it can be something that can be managed at home or in the community, that's much better for you. Tasked with prioritising new arrivals in the ambulance bay is Sister Jane Hawksworth. Four minutes ago you arrived. 98-year-old lady walked off the ambulance. Oh, hello. Are you cold? Are you cold? She's had a blanket. I've done this job for a long time now, in a number of years, and it's got harder over the years because obviously people are living longer. I know, yeah, 98 year old. It can be the most traumatic time for them. Um, but they come in, we look after them, we do the best that we can for them. Uh, she's a fall, uh, head injury on Walgreens. Oh, so she's going to need scanning. Yeah. She's got up feeling a little bit woozy, gone to make herself a cup of tea and had a bit of a tumble in the kitchen. So she's got a big. Just turn your head, Doris, for me, lovely. And she had a fall. Couple of days ago, so she's got all that on face. She's got pain to make sure there's quite a few things on what's going on. Yeah, but in sheltered accommodation. Have you got a headache? Mm -hmm. No, no, she's no she's pain. No pain, oh, no pain anywhere. No. Got a right bump on your head. Yeah, it's not like it was when I first moved. It's not like it is when you first did it. Why was it bigger? Mm -hmm. Was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. We need to get you onto one of these trolleys because you're going to have to go for a scan on your head. You know, because you're on warfarin, so we just need to check that there's nothing wrong. Doris, <laughs> you know when you fell, did you knock yourself out? I did knock myself out. You didn't. Do you have one of those emergency things that yeah. you can pull? Yeah. yeah. So that's what you did, did you? And then they came to get you yeah. up. Okey doke, sweetie. You're yeah. okay. Cheryl's just requested a CT head on ice for a 98-year-old lady called Doris Bergen. All right, look, I'm just doing some bloods and then I'll bring her out here. Is that all right? Thank you. Bye. Do you want another blanket? No, I'll be all right. All right, lovely. I'm just going to leave you here while you go for a picture. Hello, Bansleyne. Yep, 90-year-old male, chest pain. All right, if you want to bring it to the hub and we'll go from there. All right, cheers. Within minutes of saying it's quiet, the casualty bays start filling up again. Dr Julian Humphrey is called to the assessment bay to treat 90-year-old Jack, who has symptoms of a heart attack. Did your daughter ring the doctors and tell them that yes. you'd been having chest pain? Yes. The chest pain that you've been having, when did you have it? Today or yesterday? Y yesterday. It was likely yesterday. 
And does it feel like a pressure on your chest? That's it. Right. I've got it's off the side and yeah. laid on my back. Right. I laid on the other side because of pain. Just now, to see if I could easy. Were you a miner? That's the other thing I yes. need to know. Right, you yes. were a miner. Okay. Yes. Right. How many years were you down the pit? Going into 40 years. And did you get any compensation for your chest or anything like that? Uh, not, not for my back. Just for your back? Yeah, for my back. Right. You had an accident down the pit, did you? Yeah. We, we, see, we see a lot of miners. That ethic, that hard-working, you know, Yorkshire grit, I think comes across in, in the way that these patients talk to you or have this sort of very stoical attitude. This, this group, slowly but surely, are actually dwindling down now. Uh, uh, bubble cancer. As well? Right. Right. right, you're a medical mi miracle, aren't you? Yeah, I, you're, yeah. you're a tribute to the NHS. I, I play for England at arms. Did you? I, I play for the county. Right, how many layers of clothes have you got on there? I've got uh, a, a long sleeve t shirt. Right. And I've got a shirt. I need to get, just get to your heart, so I want to have a quick listen to it, if you don't mind. Right, well, that scar's healed up quite nicely, hasn't it? Just relax, let me have a quick listen to your heart. Right. Now, this pain that you're getting, does it feel like it's across your chest, like a pressure? Right, just there, there. And does it... Right. About there, there. Does it hurt when I press on your <coughs> chest at all? Keep pressing. Right. With your heart being a little bit diseased, we're going to need to just check it over, OK? That's what your doctor wanted, I would imagine. We'll do another tracing of your heart and we'll take some blood from you, OK? He's a character, isn't he? <laughs> I, I don't know if you saw, but he put his fist to his chest. And that's, that's one of the classic signs that it's, it's pressure there. And that's possibly from an angina type pain. As Dr. Humphrey's shift nears its end, he's keen to get 90 year old Jack home as soon as possible. Right, so uh, he's got tripacicular block on there, which is first degree heart block plus left bundle branch block. Normally, patients who have that rhythm need a pacemaker, but um, he's not describing any syncopies. Right, young man, why don't you come back and oh, sit down and I'll have a little chat with you. Are you watching the world go by, are you? Sorry, you can sit on that chair if you want. It definitely isn't your heart, all right? No. Really. As I say, if it's not your heart, then it, what we call is, is not specific, so we don't know quite what it is. So we're going to let you go home, all right? I'm going in and have my daily paper to read okay. when, I get, when I get home. Yeah, and I'm just going to speak to the nurse and we'll get you up to the discharge lounge, yeah, all right? Sure. Right. Thank you very much. OK. Thank you. One of the things about mine, isn't it? and in general, Barnsley people, is they're extremely respectful to doctors. Thank you for helping me. Thank you, doctor. That's one of the things that does make me proud to work in Barnsley, actually, that recognition of what you do. As Jack is discharged, the day shift ends for the team of Barnsley Casualty. This hospital is very, very, very good. The staff, the staff.